Welcome to my talk. It's almost 10.50 here in Berlin and I'm very happy to see that you are, have attended to my talk using blockchain to reduce electronic waste or e-waste and make recycling commercially viable. My name is Nina Schmulius. I am the speaker today for the next 20 minutes and then we go quickly into a Q&A. And before I start, I just like to um, thank the Hyperledger community, the Linux Foundation and the sponsors Accenture and IBM for inviting me to speak here. I think the Hyperledger community is an incredible community. I've joined over the last weeks the Hyperledger special interest groups and they're amazing people. And uh, if you want to learn more about Hyperledger, I can really recommend to join those groups. So the next thing before I start is, um, unfortunately, my system faces some weird problems with platform Hopin. So my camera might drop off in between the talk and I might be even quitted out of the talk because uh, the Hopin platform is uh, a little bit too much for my system. And I kindly ask you to stay in the talk. I will be uh, back soon. And I also apologize for this <clears throat> more or less unprofessional frame with the PDF. <laughs> it's the best settlement I could do with the Hopin platform not to overload the system. Yeah, so let's get, start. Uh, let's get started. To give you a quick impression, what we are talking about in the next 20 minutes is of course, I'm very interested uh, who is joining the talk and I want like to share about me and what uh, is my background, why I'm here today. Then I want to talk to you why we need change, what is the problems or what are the problems linked to e-waste, what could be the solution or the solutions. And let's talk blockchain, of course, we're in a blockchain forum here. And uh, of course, I want to give you an insight about the impact we could make. While I'm talking, you see on the right side, you see a bar with a possibility to chat. I would like to invite you to, to chat, to make contact with, with each other. Please share your name. Please share what, where your background, a bit about what you're doing. And of course, uh, if you like the town, that you are in and uh, I would like to see that later on and please just connect to each other because this is also a network a community event and um, that's why we are here, isn't it so? So let me give you a quick introduction about my background. I'm a writer, a lecturer in Switzerland and also the founder of 7479C, a startup that is connected to the problems of e-waste but today i'm speaking to you mostly as a citizen as a citizen of this planet and i feel the urge to to address my problems that i especially have with the topic of e-waste to you today to inspire you and yeah to bring some new hopefully new information about e-waste and things that are connected to it and I'm very happy to be part of your community today. Let's jump directly into the e-waste, why we need change. And why I'm talking about e-waste, I now want you to imagine you stand in front of a massive cruise ship. You may have seen them uh, lying in harbor. Maybe you have traveled with, with one in your lifetime. So you know how impressive and how massive those ships are and it's just one but i now want you to imagine you stand in front of 350 cruise ships and now your mind is a little bit like this one isn't it so why i'm telling that 350 cruise ships is exactly the amount of e-waste we produced in one year in 2019 accordingly to the Global E-Waste Monitor, a report from United Nations. It's a number, isn't it so? <laughs> so. And only or less than 20% of this amount 
was collected and professional recycled. What is e-waste in general? To give you a quick information about that. E-waste is everything that is temperature exchange equipment, such as fridges or air conditioners, but it's also screen and monitors, of course, it's lamps, large equipment, for example, large printers in company, small equipment like calculators, but also small IT and um, yeah, your laptop or your smartphone. That's what, uh, what e-waste defines. So I said before, only 20% is uh, recycled or even less than 20%. So the question is, what is happening to the other 80%, isn't it so? And sorry, but we don't know entirely yet. What we know so far is that there is a lot of movement of e-waste, mostly from high-income countries to low-income countries. I just gave you here an example, or you just can see the example of the US. So the US ships a lot of e-waste outside to countries like India, Brazil, to Nigeria, to Ghana. Yeah, This is what we somehow know. It's not totally, um, totally clear, but that is what we somehow know about the movement of e-waste. So what is the problem or what causes such a movement is environmental or waste colonialism. What we mean by environmental or waste colonialism this is a scientific uh, definition is all um, movement from high income to low income countries. And I gave you the example of the US, but of course, US is not the only country who does it, right? So it's all here in Germany, we, we do nearly the same. But it also, I mean, waste colonism is also the, the kind of that, um, you know about that waste is shipped out, like, I, like you see here in the quote, Malaysia sent uh, 4,000 tons of plastic trash back to rich countries, but it's also not only about the trash, that is uh, going around, it's also about that indigenous people are suffering from the moment that we need raw materials a lot and they suffer from displacement. So it's sad to say, but um, and I'm also a smartphone user, so I also have two laptops here in front of me to, to get this presentation ongoing, but it's sad to say buying a new smartphone or laptop accelerates environmental or waste colonialism until now. The second problem linked to e-waste is climate change. Smartphones and laptops contain a lot of precious metals such as gold and silver, right? And mining those uh, raw materials accelerates global warming. Raw materials are also becoming scarce and 80 to 90% of our raw materials are coming only from China. Since pandemic started, this has led to many problems like delays in supply chain or even delivery, um, yeah, late deliveries of electronic devices. Unfortunately, we are still doing this raw material mining. So you can say, okay, our smartphones, our laptops, accelerate climate change. A very short version, but it is that way. But it's not only that uh, we have this massive problems like uh, environmental or waste colonialism or climate change that we face as citizens of our planet. Also, businesses change a lot of um, shifts and new needs since the past years. One, of course, it's also climate change. Businesses always say, yeah, why should I care for climate change? I mean, I don't have a problem here, right? But that's not true. So um, as you see, I, I brought you some quotes from Forbes and CNN Business, and climate change is really cost intensive for businesses. So if businesses would realize
say, okay, we do something against climate change, it would be less expensive for them. Also, businesses nowadays face a lot of requirements in the environmental, social and governance sector, such as fair labor conditions. Let me give you one example. Um, the best is the food industry or the fashion industry. More than 80% of consumers pay attention if the product is sustainable. That's one of my favorite topics, topics the plant obsolescence. You see here this beautiful light bulb, which is the oldest light bulb on planet. It still hangs in a fire station somewhere in the US. And it's still, you, you can still watch it burning, so you can see the live videos there. So, you know, 100 years ago, the companies decided to go for plant obsolescence. And of course, this is also a major threat or a major problem of e-waste, right? Because it accelerates already e-waste. Another topic I found out during my research for the past two years about e-waste is that consumers do not know about the value of their waste. So this is pretty, I, I just uh, point to myself because I have three old laptops at home and also three old smartphones, right? So it's, uh, it's not about you only, it's also about absolutely me. So um, what is the, 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 the facts behind? Um, I found out during my research, of course, there are already solutions such as Fairphone or Google came up with the Google Era project, right? Which could be easily to switch components once they are broken. But um, due to my experience of 20 years in marketing and corporate communications, I know that people buy lifestyles, right? I'm the best example. I love Apple and I have everything of Apple, right? So I never switch, sorry, to another system, right? That's it. People buy lifestyles, they buy systems, not solutions, unfortunately. Another thing that is a threat or a problem uh, linked to e-waste is the hibernation. So, um, as I said before, I have four uh, old laptops at home, and so I'm causing a problem because I'm building a barrier to circular stock. Let me sum it up. Unfortunately, until nowadays, yet consuming devices grabs more attention than the e-waste it causes or the way it is manufactured, right? But I'm sure this will change soon. And why I'm so sure? Two weeks ago, I attended in Paris or virtually in Paris to the Change Now gathering, the, the largest world gathering for impact on planet. And I always heard in every talk that people want to live in alignment with their values and companies providing that will thrive. So that brings us to a beautiful solution. Let us turn problems into solutions, people. Let us rebalance Earth. The time is now. And one solution could be that you include knowing and caring for e-waste and the manufacturing process into ethical consumerism, right? So normally, or until now, we are just starting from source to product and look on this part of the supply chain, but we should look more. We should look behind the product. We should look what causes the waste or which waste is caused. And also we should look more close to the manufacturing process when we talk about ethical consumerism. What could be a solution for hibernation? Once I would be rewarded for bringing my four or six or eight devices back to the recycling yard, it would be brilliant, right? Because I would run to get the reward. So that could be also a possibility to, uh, to stop this barrier to circular stock. And the third topic linked to e-waste could be empowerment of urban mining. Instead of linear practices, we could start thinking circular and make recycling commercially viable through that process. And what do I mean when I talk about urban mining? 
it is um, the city or to look at the city as a raw material deposit. So the raw materials are next to the, my neighbor's door. Yeah. So um, it also is based on the three principles, reuse, recycle and recover. And it helps to or it helps us to avoid transport routes. Why is it so necessary? I just sum it up. Accordingly to the report by the United Nations, the value of raw materials in the global e-waste generated in 2019 is equal to approximately 57 billion US dollars. Think of that. Still, we haven't solved one problem, the role of businesses. What could businesses help us to do all those solution thriving? And my answer, of course, is let's talk blockchain, right? Maybe you're familiar with using blockchain on supply chain and businesses could enable consumers to trace their raw materials through recycling processes. They could easily use blockchain to meet requirements in the ESG sector by building transparent, sustainable supply chains. And they could also prove that their devices are made out of materials from urban mining. Just to give you some inspiration about the possibilities, blockchain could be used as a ledger here for the reward system or also to trace each component. You know, nowadays it's possible to build a digital twin on blockchain. So you could easily trace each component of a laptop, for example, or a smartphone. Because sometimes only the plastic from a laptop is recycled, but not the entire device itself. It could help us to understand where the 80% of e-waste is going, right? And it could help us to bring recycling forward and to change the system to think more circular and of course to slow down climate change and reduce or minimize environmental and waste colonialism how could it work just a small graphic i don't want to take it too far because it's a uh, as i said i don't want to put my startup in in the center of this talk i just want to talk to you and uh, give you some inspiration about it you can easily trace devices um, from the beginning of the manufacturing process, even nowadays uh, from, from the sources of raw, materi raw material mining, isn't it so? And you can trace it along the entire value chain until uh, reselling processes. And even when they are resold two times, three times, you can easily just keep the data, right? Until the device is entirely 100% recycled. So two minutes to go before we start to the Q&A. So I give you a little insight of the impact we could make. Blockchain has already become a driving force for open supply chains and for transparent supply chains, right? So imagine blockchain would become a driving force in open reverse supply chains so that you have a completely transparent value chain for e-waste that would be absolutely brilliant right according to the problems i mentioned what would we achieve we would know where the last 80 percent of 53.6 million metric tons of e-waste would be we would make sure that the waste is recycled we would thrive urban mining empower citizenship reduce climate change or at least slow it down we would be also rebalance inequalities and stop environmental colonialism. And these are just goals I never made up myself. These are goals linked to the sustainable development goals of United Nations, of course. And I think this model could be a benefit for citizens because we are all citizens. Even if you work at IBM, you're still a citizen of this planet. <laughs> and it could help us to really achieve those goals. So I'd like to thank you for your attention. Wherever you are, please stay safe. And uh, I open the Q&A now.
Thank you, Matthew. That's incredible. Yes, I invite you to contact me directly if you like so. And yeah, I'm happy to, if you want to help me. That's great. Thanks, Peter, for sharing. Thanks, Dorothy. Yes, for the reminder. And yes, um, are there any questions you have? You can, if you like, if you like, you can type it in the chat. Um, I normally go with questions like, okay, do we need, um, do we need, ah, yeah, the Q&A, excuse me, sorry. Yes, Matthew. Oh, no, we start with Takuma. Thanks for the question, Takuma. Um, ah, are there any groups already discussing e-waste? I just can answer it from the perspective of a German, right? Um, so we have a lot of uh, groups here in Germany um, discussing e-waste. One is the... Uh, uh, a group that is absolutely for Berlin. And also I can recommend you to, to look at the donut groups um, formed by the donut theory of Kate Ravers, who is also interested in seeing the holistic picture of waste and um, economy. Uh, so Matthew, does the technology exist to be able to recover these raw materials from e-waste? Yes. Yes, and thank you for the questions, of course. Yeah, it is. And um, one major uh, one major player in this game is Mint Innovation in Auckland. They found a system to use, I think it's bacteria, um, to, to uh, recover precious metals from waste. And they did it in a way which is... Um, commercially viable because this is the pain point about recycling right to do things in a matter that uh, the costs are not uh, expanding right so the the name is mint innovation peter are there currently recycling systems that can be updated with blockchain um for that i think that the model i propose here is very new and i haven't seen that yet but well, you know, it's just, um, it might be. So um, I can have a look and can get to get back to you. Just send me an email if you like, so we can discuss that or I just do a deeper research on it. So there is a notion that blockchain and its need for several nodes itself contributes to excessive use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how do you see, yeah, how do I see that? Right, thanks for the question, Katrick. That's uh, incredible. Yes, I'm, I'm um, thinking about that a lot, to be honest. And um, if you're a bit familiar with blockchain, then you know that um, mining Bitcoin is in the center of this discussion, right? So that's one aspect of it. But the other aspect, you are totally right, I think, there are several blockchains using several kind of energy amounts. This is one fact. And the other is, I think blockchain is still in its uh, beginning. And I think we need to, to look at it. It's a very young technology uh, from my perspective, to be honest. So, so I'm, uh, yeah, I'm looking, of course, to um, that there will something come up with uh, a less uh, use of energy. Thanks for the question, but it's really, really uh, absolutely necessary to discuss that. So, um, for example, for my startup, I'm doing a life cycle assessment to look um, if this is also um, causing more damage or if this is really a solution that can help us to reduce the energy problem. Thanks. Yeah, Ernest, thank you so much. How do I incentivize all the stakeholders in the value chain to ensure you have a complete traceability record in the blockchain? Right. So, yeah, that's that's another topic um, I'm thinking about a lot. But there are already people who have solved that problem. And um, once it, one is uh, the startup provenance in based in London, I guess. And um, they work closely together with NGOs. And there's another startup which is working also on transparent supply chains here in Germany by initiated by Boston Consulting Group. And they work, for example, together with World Wildlife Fund. And I think this is a valuable uh, situation when you just 
shape a, a, a model that also includes non-governmental um, organizations. And that's what I'm aiming to do at 7479C. So, thanks a lot for your questions. If there's any question left here, please uh, go ahead and reach out later if you want to. I will also be uh, attending to other sessions at Hyperledger Global Forum. And um, yeah, I can just tell you these guys and uh, girls, <laughs> you have to say, <laughs> um, are an incredible community i know from the special interest group that they're already also working on this energy problem and a lot of stuff and yes i'm very happy uh if you just go and join our special interest groups uh peter thanks uh 7479c is building a platform and app to inform people consumers and businesses about raw materials and to enable them to trace them through the entire recycling process. And also we are empowering recycling by donating a percentage of our revenue to build professional recycling facilities wherever it is needed. And we're a startup and yeah, we are here in Berlin. So whenever you want to reach out, I'm very happy. Thank you, Peter. That's cool. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot to all of you. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Clementina. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Eric. Thanks and uh, have a good time. Have a good Global Forum 2021. Have fun.